Okay, it's JDM Tech with another video, and we want to discuss uh, a little bit about fuel injectors and diagnostics on these. Um, first of all, you have to keep in mind that there's two different things going on with this injector. There's your electrical portion, and then you also have your um, hydraulic and mechanical section, the pintle that has to move up and down in there. So this will answer any questions um, if you're dealing with a fault of some kind with your injectors. Uh, basic questions that kind of apply to all these uh, fuel injectors. There's two main types, a saturated type and a non, which both of them have different resistance values, but you can check with your OEM specifications. Um, an easy way to do that is a website called Mitchell DIY. Um, you can create a login and for 20 bucks you can get access to all the technical data you need for any car and it'll give you these specifications as well. So you can take a connector from an old harness like I did here and uh, create a tool that you can connect to the injector and then be able to ohm it out. Um, the other thing is what I have created here is uh, sort of a tester for injectors. It, it was going to be used for another purpose, um, which I won't share with in this video, but I will say that uh, it works well for operating a fuel injector. Um, this stuff can all be had on eBay and on Amazon. Uh, this is a, a frequency, PWM frequency meter. Uh, it comes in this neat little gray case. And then this is um, a little digital timer box that you can set um, for you know how long you want power to be on, how long you want power to be off, that sort of thing. So the way I have it set up is when I push this button, this timer will count down five seconds and it will supply power to this unit. And this will output a frequency here for me to be able to run my injectors. All right, so a predetermined amount of time, a predetermined duty cycle, I have it at 25%, which means 25% of the time it will be on, and then the other 75% of the time it will be off. And this is 10 times per second. And, uh, and like I said, you can take this up or down. I put it here real slow in a low duty cycle so that you can really hear the injectors, all right? So ohming the coil is one way to make sure that the coil itself is not open or shorted. So open your meter would read OL and then shorted you would have too low of resistance. The coil is internally shorted. The electricity doesn't have to pass through all the windings to get from point A to point B. All right. And a lot of times um, what happens on these cars is you have positive power supplied on one side of your connector all the time. And then the computer just pulses the negative side in order to create the injector pulse. And the computer basically does what you what you have here but it will vary it up and down based on your driving conditions, right? Um, so I don't want to turn this into too basic of a lesson about fuel injectors, but what I do want to say is um, you can send injectors out for a cleaning and they can come back bad. Um, so I sent this row of injectors here out for cleaning. Uh, these came off of the original engine from the car that I'm working on, which is a Porsche Boxster. It's a 986. Um, and when they came back, we trusted that they would be good and we put them on the fuel rail and installed them in the car and once we went to try to fire up the car we had to troubleshoot it down to figure out that it was not the immobilizer it was not the wiring it was not the computer we troubleshot it all the way down to failed injectors so we have five out of six injectors that provide absolutely not a click nothing at all all right so they're mechanically stuck what happened is when they clean these, they, dink, they dunk them in a solution of soap and water and they run them on, sort of on a machine like this, just an industrial size one. And um, they vary the pulsing up and down and they also put it inside of an ultrasonic cleaner. So it's vibrating really fast while it's clicking on and off in soap and water. And they also change the little filters that are in here. You can buy those little filters and take a screw screw it in there and yank those filters out and then install new filters and new o-rings um, if you wanted to try to make an ultrasonic cleaner or buy one yourself make something like this and you can clean injectors at home um, the trick is when you're done you have to flush that soap and water out properly or these injectors will actually seize up mechanically inside and i feel like that that's what's happened to these so as the description of the video says i want you guys to actually hear the difference between a failed stuck one um, an old one this just came off of a fuel rail that I just purchased for the vehicle and a new uh, race injector okay so I want you guys to hear the difference and then also I'll show you the tip difference as well 
So, so here's the tip difference between a race injector and then here's the tip on a standard injector. So you can clearly see that difference there. All right, now let's listen to the difference. So here's what a used injector sounds like. Probably got 100,000 miles on it. I'm gonna hook it up. And then if you see right here, you'll see the timer when I push this button begin to count down. All right, so this big ugly push button, but that's all I had, so I made it work. And you can hear it. I'm gonna do it one more time so you could hear it close up. So this is, like I said, an injector with a lot of miles on it. All right. Now, here's what a new injector is gonna sound like. Okay. A lot quieter. All right, I'll run it one more time. Now I believe this is a lot quieter because everything is new inside and the pintle is not as sloppy. Um, the spring is probably a lot stronger. So it's gonna have a lot better control over the flow coming out of that tip than a, an old used injector, right? And then here's the ones that I sent out to be cleaned. absolutely nothing so we just we ran through the test on all of them and i believe this was the only one that made any sound which is not surprising because the car didn't even pop like it was firing on one cylinder that one may have been trying to squirt some fuel but it wasn't enough to make the car even sound like it wanted to turn over all these other ones have absolutely just a dead silence to them when you hook them up uh so i hope this can help you uh Troubleshoot your injectors um, if you think that you're having issues um, with your fuel injectors. Oh, I'll show you one more thing. Uh, stay right there. I'll be right back. I don't use this that often, but this is from Harbor Freight. And obviously it broke cheap, right? So I just taped it together. This is a technician's or mechanic's stethoscope. Um, you can do the same thing with, uh, with a really long screwdriver, like you know, like this, it's just a bit more dangerous when you're near rotating belts and such. You just put it on the injector. Say this is the injector in the engine. You put it on the injector like that, and then you put this side right to your ear. It does the same thing. It'll transfer the sound from that injector to your ear so that you can hear if it's clicking or not. All right, so if you want to diagnose, why is this cylinder misfiring? If it's not an ignition concern, then you could check fuel injection that you are getting a pulse. That doesn't mean that you're actually uh, getting spray though, all right? So you could have a clogged injector that's still clicking. All right, so remember, you got your hydraulic, you got your electronic, and then you also have a mechanical aspect to these things. So this is just another way that you can diagnose them. Also at, um, at I believe AutoZone and O'Reilly's, um, I'm sure you could find it on Amazon. Um, it's called a Noid Light, N-O-I-D. And they come in with different connector ends on them. So you can take this off, like let's say this is on your engine and this is connected on your fuel rail and into your intake manifold, you can just take this off and you can plug this Noid light in here and you can crank the engine and you can actually see that Noid light pulsing. I wouldn't recommend trying to do that with any other type of light because the draw may be incorrect. You might come up with an incorrect diagnosis, but that's one way to check for uh, proper injector pulse as well. All right, so I'm not gonna go into too much more crazy detail about this. I just wanted to show that this can happen. All right, this is a possibility among whole bunch of other stuff that could go wrong all right and like i said this this came off of a porsche so um we had the engine out on a stand and it was very easy to install these injectors that we thought were nice and clean and we actually ended up having to um to remove the convertible top from the car and and uh just to gain access because it has too hard of a rear window which would make contact with the anti-roll bar uh up there on the top so you can't get access to the engine so um now you can actually gain access to the engine with the top off, but you can see how far down in there you have to go to get that fuel rail out. This is with a lot removed. There's the shift cables sticking up. I mean, this, this was tough to get to. You know, on a normal car with the engine in the front, not so bad, but on this, very tough. All right, so 
Just want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.